Um, so today's pesky plant of the month is garlic mustard. So here you can see garlic mustard. It's called garlic mustard because if you crush its leaves, it has this garlicky smell. Um, it also goes by other names like Jack by the Hedge. And it's native to Europe, parts of Asia and Africa. And it was introduced to North America from Europe in the 1800s for use um, as a culinary plant. Um, as an herbal plant. And since then, it's also been used in the past for erosion control. Um, hindsight is, of course, 50, uh, 2020. And now we know that um, that's, that's not a good plant for that use because it will take over and um, really dominate and prevent other plants from establishing. So the first report of it in the US was in the 1800s in New York. And since then, it has spread all over and become quite a problem. So here's kind of a photo of what you might see it doing in the woods. It can rapidly invade and form dense stands, um, especially in edges, roadsides, disturbed areas, um, and woodlands. And it's really one of the few invasives that can colonize that dense woodland understory. It's got relatively high tolerance to shade. Um, it's also thought to exude chemicals from its roots that inhibit the growth of other plants mediated through soil fungi. So not only is it having a negative impact because it's taking over and growing really densely and preventing other things from growing over there, but also changing things below ground as well. And uh, one thing to note about garlic mustard is that its life cycle is two years. So it only lives two years and its first year, it's gonna be this small rosette um, low to the ground. And then in its second year, that's going to shoot up into these flowers. It will produce seed and then that will die and the cycle re will repeat. So that's really significant if you're thinking about management, because unlike some of the other invasive plants that you might be familiar with, like bush honeysuckle, where the root system is really key in killing that root system, with garlic mustard, it's going to repeatedly establish by seed. So if you were to kill all of these plants, but there's still lots of seed in the ground, that's going to come back year after year and just be something to consider. Um, so what does it look like? Let's look at each of those different stages. So this is that first year, that small rosette stage. In its first year, garlic mustard leaves um, are rounded, maybe kind of heart-shaped or kidney-shaped, and they have this scalloped margin around the edge with these rounded edges here. Um, in this stage, growing as a rosette on the ground level, they are really easy to miss. And identification can be pretty tricky because there's a lot of things that kind of look like this. Um, one thing to do is to crush up those leaves and see if they smell like garlic that can, that can help you in that identification. And so seeds in the ground will germinate in the spring. They'll grow into these rosettes um, and that will last throughout the spring of the following year, um, through the winter and into the spring. And then they'll shoot up into these flowering uh, garlic mustard stalks. And um, the leaves kind of change at this point. They become uh, you know, a different shape. They're more serrated um, and it will grow much taller. While those rosettes are very small, this could grow up to maybe three or four feet tall, although they can certainly also be smaller. Um, and then this is the flower of garlic mustard. You can see it's got these four white petals. Um, garlic mustard tends to flower in the late spring, so late April and May. And those flowers develop into these seed pods. You can see that starting to elongate there, um, a long silique with seeds inside. So um, after that, this plant will die back and uh, you might see the leftovers of those seed pods, those siliques. Um, and this is what those seeds would look like inside of it. Um, so afterwards, once those plants have died, it does no good to pull it up uh, because um, those seeds are already gone and that plant has already died. Um, and something to think about with that is that a single plant, a single garlic mustard plant can produce thousands of seeds. So another point to keep in mind in your management and that if you're going to pull up garlic mustard, you really need to get all of it because if you leave even one plant, um, it can produce thousands of seed that could, uh, you know, invade in the future. Um, so these seeds will generally germinate in a year or two, 
but they can live in the seed bank for longer than that, for up to five years or maybe even more. Um, so this is something that is gonna take a while to get it out of the seed bank, even if you are managing it really regularly. Where is it now? Garlic mustard is widespread throughout the Northeast and in the Midwest, where it's been established for quite some time. Um, it's also throughout Kentucky, and I think this map is underreporting it. I think it's in more places than that, um, but it's not as dominant here as it is in other areas. And I think that that gives us a little bit of incentive um, if you see it and you see a tiny bit of it to manage it right away rather than waiting for it to become more of a problem. So speaking of managing garlic mustard, how do we do that? Um, as with other invasive plants, controlling garlic mustard requires patience and persistence. Um, and by far the easiest way to manage it and control it is to prevent its arrival and establishment. Um, so if you can catch it when there's just one little clump instead of a whole sea of garlic mustard, that's a lot easier than you know, trying to deal with this situation where you have a lot of seed in the seed bank that's going to continue to grow um, and be a problem into the future. So the sooner you can catch it, the, the less of a hassle to be, the easier it will be to manage. So in addition for scouting for you know, seed that's germinating from the seed bank, if you controlled an area, be on the lookout for new things that are coming in, seed that might have come in, you know, humans accidentally moving it around in the mud on your boots or animals moving it around. Um, another common management approach is to pull it up. Garlic mustard pulls are really popular early spring events in many public areas. And here you can see some photos of that. Um, but thinking back to garlic mustard's biology, uh, I really wanna emphasize that you should only do this if you're gonna be getting all of the flowering heads. And by all, I mean, over 95% of those flowering heads. Because if you don't, every little micro site disturbance that you create when you pull up that root system is a perfect place for those seeds to grow and germinate in the future. So you could actually be having a negative impact if you're not pulling up all of it. Um, so I think that's kind of counterintuitive, but it's something worth noting when you think about your time and energy, you wanna make sure that it's actually having a positive impact. A few other tips for pulling up garlic mustard. Um, you want to pull up the plants before they seed. Um, once they uh, have seed on them, and if you're pulling them up, you can easily spread seed around that way. It's easiest to pull them up when the soil is moist after a rain because you really want to get all of that taproot. Um, if you leave some in the ground, it's, it could potentially send up one other shoot that might be shorter, but still flowering and produce seeds. And then once you have pulled up the plants, make sure you do like these people in these photos and bag them up and take them out. If you just leave them on the ground, they will surprisingly continue to develop into seed. Um, so just a few tips for that. Um, and then for kind of larger infestations, um, you can also use herbicides and chemical control for garlic mustard, um, especially if they're in areas where hand pulling is not going to be effective. But you do want to keep in mind that uh, you don't want to damage some other plants that are nearby. Uh, so um, while people will commonly use glyphosate based herbicides um, to those rosettes, Doing this in the early spring, for example, might give you a time window when that garlic mustard is active, but other plants aren't. So you're likely to minimize your non-target damage to other things. And just like with pulling up garlic mustard, um, herbicide is something that's gonna have to be repeated year after year as you exhaust that seed bank, because that's really what it's all about with garlic mustard management. So whether you're dealing with garlic mustard or other invasive species, there are lots of great resources for you online to help with identification and management. For example, the Forest Service has several free books that you can find dealing with that topic. And then thanks for joining us today. And if you have any other questions, make sure to check us out at KY Forest Health on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, as well as our website.